when you have the 50 50 vision was it 40 40 i don't know what it is when you look in when you look in from when you look back at something and with B, with Biko and Black and the BPM, we actually had, uh, we had quite a time to look back. You know, we we it happened in the mid seventies, and then we could read onto Biko and on BCM, um, we could reinterpret, etc. As as Dan phrased it, we write what we want to, um, and we don't know yet about the effects of that period of 2015, 2017, because many of you are still either studying, you are entering some of your are, there's some people now in parliament, right, who are MPs. Uh, yeah. There are people who've entered the professions. So it's going to take a while. And so the effects of something, and I think Alex was showing this, we're now seeing where many of those people ended up. They run universities, Adam Habib. They they are the president of council, Bani Pichana. They run a university like Mampela. Can we, is there a way that we could, like, judge what 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 are the major victories that came out of from that period of 2015 2017 and i know i'm starting another program right now but i'm not going to try and do that so if you could like make it like short and sweet so that we could get out of here but i really wanted to ask this can we judge how can we judge let me put it like this how can we judge 2015 to 2017 how can we judge that movement was it a success um, or is it too early to ask that question? Well, I don't know if you want to add something to that. The only thing, the only thing I want to add is that the phrase Sean is actually 2020 vision. And I think Thank the you. fact that we threw that around so much has something to do with why this year has been so crap. It's just been like, <laughs> if you guys for saying all the time. <laughs> but no, go ahead and answer the question. Maybe I should add one other small thing to it because there's also partly this question about the end of the ANC's project. Like people were saying like, the ANC's project ran aground and something else should emerge. So how do we judge that period? And just a sort of 1A, is there is this pointing for us to something to, to something else? Like another kind of politics. The 2015 to 2017 point us to something else, a different kind of politics that we can imagine in a place like South Africa. Yeah, to to sort of frame it in the way Patani was putting it beautifully, I mean. Is, do you have an intellectual responsibility? How do we how do we realize it, and yeah. what is that intellectual responsibility? Perfect. Okay, I think I will go first. Oh, the twenty fifteen to twenty seventeen project, and where are we now? I mean, as you have said, uh, Sean, some have entered parliament, some have and uh, left their space, and we don't know where they are. I mean, people are leaving, and sort of like have moved on from uh, that time. So I think for me, uh, what the 2015 project managed to do was to awaken uh, the youth of this country to ask, make us ask difficult questions that are we really liberated? Where are we as a country? And to break the so-called apathy of the bond freeze that uh, we are having it easy and actually putting it out there to the country that actually uh, there's nothing there's nothing that, that has changed. And it's brought uh, into a new politic that uh, that uh, that is very important. I mean, it has managed to locate Biko into into 2015 or 2020 as we are in today. Where 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 does Biko fit in in today's time? Where uh, what kind of future do we imagine uh, for the country? So it becomes very very important that uh, although we did not uh, achieve a lot of uh, of the victories that we had intended to. Uh, to achieve, of course, the ultimate goal was free education. That has not been achieved, but it it it, it for for me it shows it sh it shows that uh, the cry for revolution or or the or or, or the the uh, the passion that the young people have in this country of true and ultimate liberation uh, was kind of um, uh, near or kind of uh, something that uh, the youth that uh, were. Uh, part of the politics in 2015 to 2017 kind of made us realize that where we are, we're not liberated. I mean, we managed to bring into very important questions. The questions are around land, the questions are uh, around free education, the question about, about uh, the structuring of, of higher education uh, uh, in our country, and most importantly, the question that uh, Alex was answering, the questions around gender and sexuality. Uh, it, it became a, 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 very, a very important conversation that was happening 
within us and outside uh, uh, and outside the community. So, for me, uh, what 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 the important lessons that we can draw from there is that uh, although the students can be able to spark the revolution and be able to see the kind of contradictions that we have in society, we cannot do it alone. We cannot do it only in in institutions of higher learning. That's one of the biggest harsh lessons that that uh, that we we have came to learn. That I mean, the whole country, the whole country was watching us and they had seen that they support the students, but there was a failure to translate the struggles that we were speaking about in universities to outside communities. Although in some places there were a certain level of, of organization that tried to happen, but it did not translate to the whole uh, university population where it became kind of a national problem, where we are able to link our struggles in the universities uh, uh, with, uh, with the struggles of the of the workers and the working class in in our communities because we are members of the community first before we are students and it also became became the same thing that happened with Marikana is that the whole country is watching that, oh it's a mine workers strike but whereas it is a strike it is a struggle for black people it's a struggle for black people's uh, dignity and ultimately everything that is wrong with this country which is the, the, the <coughs> primary the primary of that which is uh, uh, the question of land dispossession. So it becomes very important that when we look back into these three years that we had, uh, the questions that we, we must ask is that, is that how how are we able to how are we able to link both the struggles happening in the universities and the struggles happening outside the universities and post COVID? I mean, it's it's definitely going to be a, a bloodbath of jobs. It's going to uh, it's, it's it's going to be difficult. It's, it's not going to be easy at all after this pandemic. And then, how do we translate the struggles that are happening in the institutes of higher learning, where there's intellectual uh, work that's being produced and thoughts that are being produced? But how do we translate them that they don't only end in the corridors of higher institutes of institutes of higher learning, but they end up in the communities where we come from and translate into a real struggle that can happen? But uh, sadly, so there's been. A party that has been able to capture the imagination of the youth in this country. We saw them last week at clicks. Just one tweet, the youth are in the street. I, be, I believe that maybe if we can just have one tweet and say that, uh, for, uh, for example, before this, there were uh, comrades who come from the uh, uh, from the fallist generation that they walked from Johannesburg uh, to Stellenbosch, right? So comrades uh, saw that there was a uh, Joseph to Stellenbosch. Uh, movement that lasted uh, from June up until now, but there was no support from uh, the comrades from the EFF also because they were members of the EFF in, uh, in that struggle of just to still in Bosch. But how then uh, do we, because uh, the EFF has captured the imagination of the youth in this country and they they uh, they have the, they have the, the mass, but uh, are they really interested in Pushing forward the struggles that we that that, uh, that we are facing, or uh, they're just taking us for a ride. I think that's the, those are the questions that, that we need to ask from now on. On how do we link the struggles happening in the universities to the uh, political relevance of the EFF in today's time? Because you cannot denounce the fact that they are very relevant in today's country, and everyone looks at them when something happens in the country. But uh, maybe they maybe they, they just need a little push towards the left, where we can be able to clear out these contradictions and be able to uh, ultimately uh, usher a new era in, in South African politics. Alex, do you want to go quickly? Because, yeah, you, you want to quickly answer that big question. Yeah, I think firstly, I, it brings back the question around feminism and gender and sexuality because we have to ask ourselves as black people, what is the liberation, what is justice, and what is... A, a free society going to look like? And can we be free if all black people are not free? Um, and that to me is a fundamental um, fundamental question. Um, I also think, you know, what was incredibly important for me in Roads Must Fall, and I think, you know, you can see the differences or some of the, um, the differences between where people were organizing or how people were organizing at universities during Fees Must Fall is that many of us uh, were calling wanting revolution. I think um, we were not happy to settle with a 0% increment. We were not satisfied with 
it, it was if one thought that it was just about the statue then you didn't understand what the movement was about if one thought it was just about a zero percent increment then it was fun you you didn't understand it was about fundamentally changing um the society that we are living in and so i actually want to go back to a quote um that's in pico loves which is actually a quote taken from frank talk um, in 1984, which I think is really important about this that the 2015 to 2017 moment, which, which says, Biko loves two words slashed across a ghetto wall, a phrase that haunts the knights of South Africa's rulers, reactionaries and opportunists of every stripe hope and pray that it will disappear under a rain of blood and the whitewash of reform. But it remains bold and powerful. Not a tired and worn out slogan, but a battle cry of a generation whose hopes and aspirations are for revolution and, and end to all exploitation and oppression. And I think that fundamentally um, describes this, that moment for us as young black people, where we are saying, you know, we want change and we demand change and we are going to be. Um, we are going to be in struggle. And I think Petani makes an important point, which I think was a big challenge for us, is how do we move from being in the university to being on the ground outside of the university in local struggles, in national struggles of all black people, of working class people, of poor people. And, and, and I think that is fundamental. And, and to make the linkages between roads must fall, Abashale Basim Jondolo, um, when we're talking about no to, the right to say no to mining, mining. Um, in Amadiba, we are making the links because we are fundamentally wanting to challenge white supremacist, racist, um, capitalist patriarchy in this country, but more broadly, and to make the links globally because I think that is also a fundamental question when you talk about Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter everywhere, all Black Lives Matter everywhere. And so when you, for me, it, you know, I'm also thinking about what's happening um, in the U.S. around struggles of Black, Black Lives Matter and also how, you know, celebrities or um, have you surfed the narrative around um which is not necessarily anti-capitalist, which has shifted the question around abolition, um, not even to defund the police, but to community policing, et cetera. And I think when we make those global links that are anti-capitalist and anti-racist um, and, and feminist um, and pro the ecological struggle, that is uh, what young people are going around and I think we'll make change in the world and in this country in particular.